Hello, my name is Sudhanva Deshpande. I am from Jannatimanch and from Leftward Books. And it's with, great, it's, it's with a great deal of pleasure that I welcome all of you for this solidarity meeting with the Freedom Theatre of the Jenin Refugee Camp in Palestine. On the face of it, the Freedom Theatre is only a tiny theatre in a small town, in a small corner of, of a, actually a small land. But the Freedom Theatre is much more than that. It is one of the most vital theatre and cultural organisations in the world today. And the Freedom Theatre has been under attack over the years, several, several times. One of its founders, Juliano Merchames, was assassinated right outside the, uh, outside the theatre. Many others have been imprisoned. The theatre itself has also been physically attacked more than once. One reason for this is its location in the Jenin refugee camp, which itself has been a strong centre of Palestinian resistance over the decades. The other reason is intrinsic to what the Freedom Theatre does. It turns the spotlight on the occupation, on the brutal, colonialist, apathite, racist occupation of Palestine by Israel. For us in India, the Freedom Theatre holds a special place because through the play that Janna Timanch had done with the Freedom Theatre, in 2015-2016 called Hamesha Samita, which translates uh, as Forever Steadfast. We toured 11 cities in India. Subsequently, Janna Timanch also toured in parts of the West Bank in, um, in the April of, of, of 2016. So, so, for, so for many of us, uh, the Freedom Theatre is not just an abstract entity. It's actual live human beings as well. So, without any further ado, uh, I would now like to invite uh, Mustafa Sheta, uh, who is a producer uh, at the Freedom Theatre. This recent raid that happened, uh, that lasted for almost three days, was one of the most uh, severe and one of the most brutal raids uh, by the Israeli uh, occupation forces. Um, it, it reminded a lot of people of the year 2002, when the famous Battle of Jenin took place. Um, Mustafa Sheta was there uh, in the Jenin refugee camp at the theater. And we would like to hear from you, Mustafa, about what that meant. Uh, thank you, Sodhanva, and our friends in India. In fact, it's a really great opportunity to share with you the real story happened here in Jenin refugee camp, where is the a political space, a political area, include the political lead people. They have their uh, political identity as refugees. They are live here after 75 years under the occupation, after the Israel, this uh, colonialism state established in our country. We face this condition that happened with us for different scenarios. In fact, we, we face the same scenarios by different way. We can talk about comparative between what's happened in 2002 and what's happened in 2023. In 2002, big invasion happened here with a big Israel army, with the, uh, they occupied everything, they occupied the land, they occupied the sky. In, uh, in 2023, they occupied uh, uh, one kilometer with, for the more than uh, 18,000 refugees. They are live in the a small camp in, in the north of West Bank. Uh, they, it, they came to punishment, uh, punish all the people that already believe and support the resistance, believe the revolution for, for freedom, for liberation. They attacked everything related with the life. They, it, they, they targeted uh, the electricity, the water, the, the infrastructure, the, the, the streets, the roads, everything here. And they arrested more than 100 persons in that, in, in that small and intensive invasion. They continue with their aggressive action against the Palestinian with a big support from US, from the global, uh, our big countries in the world. And that's needed from all the people all the free people, all the free world to support the Palestinian, to get their rights, to get their liberation and to establish what they dream and what they hope in, the, in, the, in, their, in their life. How, how we can continue and accept this condition, this occupation to continue and to attack and to try to attack, to attack our dignity. That must stop. That must stop from long time, but that must stop now before tomorrow. 
So yes, uh, uh, for the Freedom Theater, this is the place where the people they came they came to to it to just to expression, to feel they can talk by freeway to 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 to, to feel they, it's really a safe space for them, just to 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 present their their talent. They they present their shows. They talk about their stories. It's under it was under attack by their sound bombs and the, the rockets and the energy and the snipers, they, they occupied the building of the Freedom Theater. They tried to, do, to, to make some big impact on the old building already we have here in the theater. This, we have theater, it's really old. It's built during the British mandate. We are like you. We, was, we were under the British occupation too. They built the store for their army and we use it later to be like a place for freedom and for liberation. They target our camera because they think it's important to hit any reality. They destroy it in the front of the Freedom Theater because they don't need to, to leave any evidence or any stamp for their ugly action happened here. It's not just about what's happened just in July. That's happened too in June and in May, in April, in March, in February, in January. That's not happened just in one time. That's happened all the time. All the time we have like big event or like big invasion here. And we have, we just collect the number of the people that are killed. And we just to check who we know from those people and the relationship between us and those people. But sometimes because we are really live here in this small area, sometimes you feel all of the people they are like your brothers or your relatives. So what you can do, how you can protect the people, how you can help them as a theater. It's really, it's really hard and difficult mission. But in the same time, what we said and what we raised, we talk all the time about our rule as important to, to just to protect the people, to talk with the people about their identity, to talk about the, the rights and about this kind of, of attacks come. And we talk about this relationship or this un, unbalance, unbalanced power deal with us from, from US, from Europe, from different countries. They can stop that. And they must stop that. And we believe for the free people and for the grassroots uh, organizations from the people already believe in Palestine, right, to support us. We know how we can continue to get liberation. And uh, we will continue in the Freedom Theater to raise the title of cultural resistance. And we will continue for, for fight and uh, to continue for a uh, continue in our struggle to get liberation in the end. Thank you very much for, uh, for giving us a sense of what it means to be uh, in a tiny place that is the, uh, the Jenin refugee camp and, and the Freedom Theater itself actually, for those of you uh, who have not been there, it's at one of the entrances of the refugee camp. You don't have to go um, uh, too deep into it. And so therefore, any, uh, any Israeli military or police vehicle that comes in uh, has to necessarily almost pass uh, next to the Freedom Theatre. And, and that's also a reason why the Freedom Theatre has been very much um, um, in their targets. Ahmed Tobasi uh, is an actor, director, uh, and currently the artistic director of the Freedom Theatre. He's a superb performer. Um, I have seen him perform. And uh, he's just in, he, he really is a force of nature. Um, and a wonderful, wonderful human being. Yes, Yanni, I'm sure Mustafa said a lot about uh, feelings, uh, invasion, the uh, army, but also it's, a, it's a good to mention that when the Israeli army comes to invade one of our villages or towns or cities or West Bank, they are not come just to destroy a building or to destroy the stones or to destroy the streets. I'm not talking about the stones. I'm not talking about uh, the cement. I'm talking about the memories that you have in that house, that your life, your family, your memories, your past, it's gone. So exactly when they attack, when they come with bulldozers, with uh, tanks, with vehicles, with drones, they come to tell us as, as people, don't dream. You are not free. You are under incubation. We have a serious issue. Now we are not talking about freeing Palestine. Now we are not talking about a, a, a human equality. We talk about 
people are living 75 years under a big psychologically mental health problems. So the Freedom Theater was so clear with all these challenges, we will, we have to continue our work. We have to secure uh, a space, safe a space, uh, uh, activity, uh, uh, workshops, an emergency uh, uh, artistic uh, uh, program that can make the children uh, 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 able to go at least a little bit, join this uh, activity and have some fun and leave the reality behind them. And I was so happy to see all artists from different fields all gather in the Freedom Theater and they go inside the camp uh, with the big protest, protest and demonstration, artistically celebrating the children, the women, and was very clear all people joined to celebrate with us, which means clearly our responsibility become bigger. Our responsibility have to bring and offer with all the situation that we live in to bring more colors to the camp, to, to bring back some colors to the people. After the invasion, and I am challenging now more people, more our community, more our uh, 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 neighbors, because now it's not about exist or not. Freedom theater is exist. Now we want more achievements. How big responsibility we have uh, as a freedom theater to continue our work. As there is invasions, as there is martyrs, tanks, rockets, also there is the freedom theater in Jenin who also gonna tell the Israelis, the occupation, the world. We also as a Palestinian, we are artists and we have theaters, we have dreams and we're gonna do art. And for us as the Freedom Theater, we will resist through theater and art. We try, we try now to focus on our uh, really program to see how we can really match it. Uh, uh, not just to show the world that we're doing work about the invasion, but it's how to, to make it naturally attached to the daily life in Genicam with the work of the Freedom Theater. Now we're taking, we have a big responsibility. We have been showing whatever is going on in Jenin uh, through the Freedom Theater. The Freedom Theater become much more than a theater. It's an organization, it's a place doing everything, serving the cultural resistance in different ways. Uh, and for us, that's what makes us continue when I see even some friends in India are interested and following and supporting us and stand in solidarity with us. That's the energy we need. So for me, thank you for this event that show us uh, uh, all this care. And for us, that's what we need to continue the work, difficult work in the Freedom Theater. I just want to say that as far as we in India are concerned, we have a very long history of, uh, of support for the Palestinian cause, for Palestinian freedom. This is something that goes from, uh, from the time of Mahatma Gandhi, in fact, from before independence, from the 1930s. Uh, the, the, the independent movement in India, Mahatma Gandhi, Jawaharlal Nehru and others stood in support of Palestinian freedom. That is really important for us to, uh, to recognize uh, and to be aware of the fact that Indian taxpayers' money is also financing the occupation of Palestine. And so it's really important for us to press upon our governments, our representatives, to take strong pro-Palestinian stance. At the moment, because of the right-wing government that we have in India, and in Israel, we have the most right-wing government uh, in its history um, at the moment, which is saying something because in Israel, you had a series of right-wing governments, but there's a kind of a natural affinity between Netanyahu and, uh, and Narendra Modi. There's a natural affinity between the ideas of Zionism and the ideas of Hindutva. Recently, we have, we've seen how the, how the bulldozer, for instance, has been weaponized in India against the Muslims. Now, this is something that is directly from Israel. This is what Israel has done consistently for many decades against Palestinians. So it's really important for us to, uh, uh, to be aware of this and to put pressure wherever we can, however we, uh, we can, on our elected representatives.
to stand up uh, in support of Palestinian rights. That's one thing. But the other thing also, to be aware of the fact that in India, we have the Indian uh, campaign for the cultural and artistic um, uh, boycott uh, of Israel, which is called INCAG-B. Uh, INCAG-B is part of a much larger global movement called BDS, which is Boycott Divestment Sanctions. Uh, the BDS movement, the Boycott Divestment Sanctions movement is something that has the support of literally all Palestinian civil society groups um, and political formations. So it has the entirety of the Palestinian people behind this campaign. And this campaign has appealed to people all over the world but to boycott companies that do business with Israel, to boycott artists um, who do business with Israel, but also ask artists and others to boycott Israel and Israeli institutions uh, and so on and so forth. So that's one. Going from there into divestment and then eventually, hopefully, for governments also to sanction Israel as they did in the case of South Africa. I also want to lastly underline the fact that this is not a boycott of all Israeli people. So therefore, individual Israeli artists or intellectuals are not under boycott, but, but artists or intellectuals who, who come to us with the support of Israeli state institutions they are the ones that we uh, that we don't have to uh, have any truck with. This is the exact, uh, um, it's an expanded uh, version um, of the campaign that eventually worked uh, in South Africa. And uh, it, it was boycotted and sanctioned um, by people and governments um, across the world. And that is what really in the end brought uh, the apartheid regime, uh, apartheid regime of South Africa down. We are also uh, very pleased and lucky to have with us Zoe Lafati. Uh, Zoe has been associated with the Freedom Theater for many, many years. Uh, she uh, has worked there. She's co-directed plays. She's directed plays for them and so on. Uh, some of us in Janati Manch were lucky to have seen a play called The Siege. Uh, which she um, had co-directed. Uh, it was an extremely powerful uh, depiction of, um, of the siege of uh, the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem uh, in the Second Intifada. Uh, I'll not go into the details of that. I just want to say that those of you who are interested in knowing more about the Freedom Theater, do visit the website of Leftward, which is leftward.com, www.leftward.com. We have two books on the Freedom Theatre that have been uh, created uh, and published in association um, with the Freedom Theatre. So just go there and search for the Freedom Theatre. You'll find both those books. Uh, Zoe joins us from, um, uh, from London. Uh, and uh, over to you, Zoe. Hi, great to be here. I'm joining you from the north, north, north west of Scotland um, and there's not great internet so hopefully um, I'll manage to stay with you. Um, before uh, Savannah's um, very kind introduction um, we heard a testimony and that testimony was of uh, Doreen Tator who is an independent poet and was imprisoned for writing um, the poem Resist My People Resist Them. This testimony is part of a project called The Revolution's Promise, which is created by the Freedom Theatre and uh, artists on the front line. And it focuses on censorship and attacks on Palestinian artists. And I'm just going to talk about that a little bit today and um, try and uh, encourage you all to get involved. Um, so the Freedom Theatre and cultural organisations across Palestine have been incredibly successful in shifting the narrative of what's happening on the ground in Palestine um, and also around Palestinian culture and history. Um, I can say as someone who is British that we often don't really hear um, the truth of what's happening or learn about um, that history correctly. And, and it has been artists and uh, film and theatre and all of these entities which have really helped um, shift things and, and educate people internationally. Um, as Janine Camp was invaded this July, the Freedom Theatre and its team, I think, did a uh, 
a, a triumphant job against um, so many um, obstacles and also as they were having to quite literally um, survive um, against that invasion. Um, but they, they managed to continue to get the narrative of what was happening in Janine Camp out to the international community and combat um, a lot of the misinformation that is often widely reported um, in mainstream media. So um, as, as mentioned today, the Freedom Theatre has also had a lot of repercussions for the, the, the work. Uh, Giuliano Mercamis, um, the co-founder and artistic director was murdered in April 2011. There have been numerous um, attacks um, and destruction to the building, including in this recent invasion, um, there has been the arrest and imprisonment of many staff members. In the last couple of years, um, again, as mentioned, the Freedom Theatre has eight, lost 80% of its core funding um, due to refusing political stipulations that that funding would come with that would make the work impossible. Currently, um, Bilal Al-Sadi, who's the chair of the Freedom Theatres Board, um, has been um, imprisoned for nearly a year um, and that is under this sort of administrative detention where you don't actually have to really give a reason to why someone is arrested, which is the, the term that many artists, um, this administrative detention, it's the term that many artists end up being held for a, a prolonged amount of time. Um, so they never even um, have the right to um, defend the charges because they don't even know what they are. Um, so... Um, we created this project called The Revolution's Promise about the legacy of persecution at the Freedom Theatre. It's not the whole history because it's so, so long and epic, um, but it, it's at least about, um, about part of that. And it also has testimonies of artists across Palestine who have been um, under attack, including um, a filmmaker who spent 20 years in and out of court being sued, a photographer who was shot in the head but survived, um, venues that have been ransacked and had all their equipment and documents destroyed, um, a theatre in Gaza um, that was specifically targeted and bombed, um, and it was a six-storey building, and it's literally a, like a crater in the um, ground now. Um, so the revolution's promise um, collated all of these uh, testimonies, but rather than the Freedom Theatre, um, you know, taking that on tour around the world, um, what we decided to do was create um, a global solidarity project, um, which invites people um, worldwide to um, read these stories and share these stories. Um, and it's not just about um, censorship, it's also celebrating all of the incredible and innovative ways that artists in Palestine are, are using culture to um, resist and as a form of cultural uh, resistance. Um, so it's really like a, a model um, of a solidarity that we're inviting you to get involved with. Um, and I think it's really interesting um, what was being touched upon today, um, you know, how all of the, you know, both sometimes within histories of colonialism, but also weapons and stuff, there's lots of interconnections. And I think one thing we found doing this project um, or other people taking on this project is that connectivity in struggles and in tactics. And, and that's been that's been very, very um, powerful and interesting, whether that's in Catalonia or Chile or um, various different places. Um, so it's not just necessarily always about giving information from Palestine, but finding those connection points. There is very much a need for people to get involved and be spreading these stories because um, artists in Palestine are absolutely doing an incredible job but it needs people internationally um, to, to join in that sharing of stories. And hopefully this is one model and one way that we can provide you with testimony and information that you can then go on and use in your communities. Thank you very much. And I do want to say to, uh, to Mustafa and to Tobasi and to all of our friends and comrades uh, in Palestine, uh, in the Jenin refugee camp at the Freedom Theater that we are sending you lots and lots of love, solidarity, strength, but also, uh, you know, we get inspired uh, uh, by you. 
because the incredible spirit of the Palestinian people, as it is uh, symbolized and expressed uh, through the Freedom Theater, uh, is something that has been of incredible uh, importance to us uh, in our struggles um, in India. Uh, so thank you very, very much uh, for all the work that you do. And thank you very much for joining uh, uh, this solidarity meeting today. I also want to uh, thank Zoe, uh, without whom uh, really uh, the meeting today would not have happened. I also want to thank uh, Vikas Ravel and his team who have worked behind the scenes uh, to make this um, uh, experience as seamless uh, as possible. And a big thanks to all of you. Uh, share this clip, uh, uh, this meeting with your friends and comrades who were not able to join um, and spread the word and spread the revolution. Thank you very, very much, all of you.